I am going to show you everything you need to know from a physicist perspective about functions in Python. Okay, so it's not going to be everything. Uh, it's just going to be everything you need to know to get started in physics. Uh, so let's start uh, talking about functions in general. So I made a little picture here. So here, this is a, a mathematical function, 3x cubed minus 2x plus 1. And, and I think a Python function is a lot like that. If you think about, if you understand mathematical functions, Python functions can be a lot like that, but, but also better and more involved. But in general, you have some type of code, you have input, and then you get output to the code, and then you can reuse that whole thing. So there you go. Now we're going to switch back to Python, and we're going to stay here. Now, I'm going to have to tell you something. I'm using GlowScript v Python. Uh, this is an online Python, but it's actually not Python. So what happens is that this takes the code that you write in Python looking stuff and it turns it into JavaScript and then it runs on a web page as far as I understand and I could be missing some stuff. So with that in mind, some things actually might do something you wouldn't expect. So just be careful when you're dealing with like global versus local variables and just avoid all those problems together. But let's just start off with a function. I'm just going to jump into it. So to make a function in Python, we start off with def. DEF, and that defines the function. Then we can pick the name of the function. In this case, we're going to call it F, which is not very creative. Uh, and I'm going to say X. Okay, so what you want to do, colon, that first line, there's a lot there. This says the name of the function is F. This says the input parameters are X, whatever that may be. But any whenever I call the function, I need to say what variables I'm going to input. And this is the variable I'm going to input right there. The colon says start the function. Now, anything indented indented right here is part of the function. Okay, that wouldn't really compile, that wouldn't really work. Because Python's like, what the heck are you talking about? I don't know anything about that. Okay, so now I can write whatever I want. I can put loops, I can put things like that. Let's just say this, temp equals 3x cubed minus 2x plus 1. That's that same mathematical function I showed before. And that, that temp is the value of that. If I have some x value that I put into my function, it's going to put that same x right here and do that calculation. Remember that uh, raised to the power in Python is star star, not hat. Okay, that was something a lot of people have problems with. Now I want to output that function. I want to output that answer. So in, in Python, we just say return temp. Okay, that's the value I'm going to return. That's it. I'm done. You could save that. Say function with an n, function practice one. And yes, I will give you the code. Don't worry about that. But you should type it yourself. Okay. So let's do this. Let's just say, uh, F, let's go, let's just print it. Print f of two. So f of two says let x equal two and then put it in this function. So let's just think what this should do. This should say 2 cubed, which is 8, times 3 is 24. And this is going to be uh, 2 times 2 is uh, 4. So it should be 20. It should return 21. So this should return 21. I think if I did my math right in my head. And didn't do anything. Unexpected. Oh, equals. That should be minus. You guys should have caught that. No, oh, it did something else wrong. Temp equals 3x cubed minus 2. Oh, 3 times, ah, 3 times x. I was just so excited to get into functions. There you go, 21. Okay, I did that right. Now we could do, we could do print f of anything, right? f of uh, 32. Why would you do that? I don't know. Okay. Uh, now I can even do things like this. Uh, x prime, let's see, let's call it... Um, x see here's where we're getting a little trouble let's go up here i don't like calling this x and then reusing x because i do, i'm never sure which variable it's going to use i'm going to change this to xt i'm going to change this to xt xt so xt is temporary x and it's only used inside the function and so i don't really care about it so now down here everything works the same but now i can do things like x equals four minus two and then print f of x so this will do the same thing, but x is going to be equal to this, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2, so I should get 21. Okay, are we happy? And then if you wanted to do something really fancy, you could say something like print 
f of 2 equals f of 2 or f of 2. And then it, it prints it out in a nice way right there. Okay. Let's see. Anything else that we need to know about that? I did that. Okay. What if I have, here's a great one. And this is a fun math thing. What if I did um, have two functions? Okay, so let's define another one. I'm going to call this one g of xt, temporary x. Uh, and I'm going to say this is equal to uh, 4x minus 5. So I'm going to say temp2 equals 4 times x minus 5. And then I'm going to return temp2. Now, I just want to say, I'm going to let me do this and then delete all this stuff. Let's just do print f of 2, print g of 2. It didn't do the second one. Oh, xt. I used xt twice. I think that's okay. As long as I don't have xt outside of a function, it should be fine. Okay. Now, let me, let me show you another way to do this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this line, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say return. I never even calculated. I just returned it. It gives the same thing. Okay, but but you see here, it's really nice. It's really powerful using these names like this g of 2, g of 3. It's, it's useful. Watch this. Okay, let's say I want to do print, and I'll write it out, f of g of 3 equals. According to Python, g of 3 is just the output of, of that, and if it's a number, it's a number. So I could say f of g of 3, and that should work. Check that out. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, uh, so you can play around with your mathematical functions that way. But let's do something uh, a little bit cooler. Let's graph. Let's make a graph of f of x. So in case you haven't done graphs before, uh, in, in Glow Script View Python, graphs are trivial easy. I can say graph equals t, I'm sorry, called t graph for the name, is graph. Uh, the x title is just going to be equal to uh, x. The y title, this is just for the axis. You could leave this off. Y title, and this is wrong, equals x. The y title is going to be, let's plot f of x. And then I need a, G, a, a plot, so I'm going to call this uh, fx equals g curve color equals color dot blue now i'm going to start off with my x values so i'm going to say x equals zero dx equals 0 0.01 because what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in my value for x i'm going to plot a data point and then i'm going to increase my value of x and so i can do the whole thing so now i can say while x is less than five. Uh, f x dot plot x f of x. So this uh, plot f f x dot plot says take that function which I called f x and plot a data point. The horizontal variable is going to be x. The vertical variable is going to be f of x. Uh, and then I'm going to increase x. X equals x plus dx. And I'm going to run it. There you go. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's do uh, some more complicated functions. Let's just delete all this. Let's calculate the gravitational field due to some planet of mass uh, of mass m. Okay, so I want the planet to have a mass m. I want uh, the uh, the the origin of the the center of the planet to be some value, and I want to find the gravitational field vector at some value. Uh, so let's define this function as just g, def g, and I need to input more than one parameter here. So I'm going to enter, enter the mass of the planet, mt. I need the uh, the position of the planet, r planet t. I'm using the t for temporary. And then the observation location, rot. So I do need the gravitational field vector, 6.67 times, I mean, not the the constant times 10 to the negative 11th, that's g. Now I can calculate the vector 
from the planet to the observation location. So neither of these has to be at zero, right? So I'm going to say r temp is r observation minus r of the planet. That's the vector from the planet to the observation location. Now I can calculate the gravitational field, g temp. It's going to be equal to g times the mass of the planet times the unit vector of r. And that's a built-in function. Norm is a built-in function in, in closed group Python that takes a vector, which remember rt is a vector. These are inputting vectors. I have to input them as vectors. Uh, and then divide by the, the magnitude of rt. So again, a built-in function finds the magnitude of a vector rt squared. Now I can return that. Return our g temp. So let's go with some objects here. Let's go with the uh, the Earth. Me, the mass of the Earth, is 5.972, 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Uh, the radius of the Earth is uh, 6.371 times 10 to the sixth. Um, okay, so now I need to pick some values for the uh, rate. Where is the Earth going to be? So let's put the Earth, the center of the Earth, at the vector. Um, I'll put it, let's just put it at R E R E 0. Let's just put it at the origin for now. And then the observation location, R O, let's put this at the surface of the Earth. So let's call this vector uh, RE00. Zero, zero. So that's on the x-axis on the surface of the Earth. Uh, now I think I'm ready. I got the mass. So let's just print out the gravitational field. So I'm going to say print G, G on surface equals g. Now I need to put in my parameters. So I'm going to have the mass of the Earth. I have to have the same order as up here, right? So I have uh, mass, the position of the planet, the position of the observation location. So it's going to be r, e, r, o. And the units would be newtons per kilogram. I think that works. I missed the negative sign up here. Okay, so I get negative 9.8 in the x direction. So that looks like it's working, right? And, and you'll notice some really important things here. One, I have three inputs. And two, my output is not a scalar, it's a vector. Okay, well, then what would happen if I, if I put in a, uh, what if I did this, R, R, E? So R, E is a scalar value. I'm putting in a scalar value, but the thing expects it to be a vector. What's going to happen? Let's just find out. And so down here, it says you can't subtract a scalar and a vector. Because over here in line 5, I'm trying to, to find, I took this value. I said RPT is a value RE. It doesn't really matter what it is. But now I'm trying to subtract that from a vector. And it's like, I can't do that. So it just crashed. Okay. So let's put that back at RE. Remember, in Python, uh, there is a difference between uh, upper and lower case letters. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of other uh, things that you can do. I'm trying to think. Oh, let's do one like this. Let's print out. Let's make a function. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this short. I'm not gonna give you. I'll make another video showing you a practical application of this. But let's make another um, function that does. I'll call it vector stuff. So def vector stuff, and it takes two vectors, vector a and vector b. And then so what it does is it's going to add these two vectors. It's going to take the dot product of these two vectors. And it's going to take the cross product of these two vectors and return all three of those. So I'll say t1, it's just a temporary variable, is going to be a plus b. t2 is going to be equal to the dot product of a and b. So dot is a built-in function. This is actually a function in Python. So I'm using a function in the function. And that's OK. You can do that. And then t3 is going to be equal to cross a and b. Now I want to return all of these things. What do I do? How do I return all of these? Well, I just do that. Return t1, t2, t3. OK, so now let's go over here and say uh, vector 1 is vector 1, 2, 3. I'm just making up some random vectors. v2 equals vector uh, 
negative 1, 0.5, 2. It's hard to just make up stuff, isn't it? So now let's just go ahead up, up here and say print uh, vector stuff v1, v2, and see what happens. And you'll see it printed out, this is actually a list. It printed out a list of values. And these don't even have to be all the same type. This first printout is a vector, because I added the two vectors. The dot product returns a scalar value, so it gave a scalar, and then it gives a vector for the cross product, and that's fine, okay? Now, that might not help you too much. So here's something that you can do, because you might want to just use one of those numbers. So let's do this. Let's call this um, result equals vector stuff v1, v2. And then I could print the result. And then I'm going to turn this off because I don't need that. And then that, that's the same thing. But now look at this. I, if I, what if I just want... Uh, the dot product, or if I just want the sum. So in order to, to, to address the different indices, I mean the different items in a list, we go by the indice. This first one's going to be uh, number 0, and then 1, and then 2, and so forth. So if I say result 0, that's the first item in the list. And that should just print out that one thing. It's not going to print out the whole thing, just the first thing. See right there. And then I could print out just the second one, which would be 1, and I could print out the third one, which is two, not three. There you go. So one of the things that I'm going to encourage you is that if you have, and this is my own personal thing, if you have an, a function that outputs more than one thing, uh, I always encourage, I always try to assign that to a variable because then you can go back and check the, the different elements of that list uh, without rerunning the function. Because sometimes you can make a function that could take a long time to run, especially if it's a numerical calculation, and, and you don't have to rerun it just to get the next piece. So if you just set it to a temporary variable, even though that variable would be a list, then you can do that. And yes, I need to make a, a, a video about lists. Um, so that, that's a good start. What I want to do next, and I'm going to make this as an, a separate video, is I'm going to show you how to do a real physics thing for like finding the range of a variable and what's the maximum range and stuff like that. So I'll do that and it'll be another video, but, but hopefully you find this useful. Uh, if not, tell me why. If you don't even find this video, don't say anything. But if you do, uh, you know, put the comments down below. I can make new videos to address your concerns because I like to do physics and Python and I'm here to help you. I'll talk to you guys later.